Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Megan Metz, and I'm from Sonoma State University's Wine Business Institute at the School of Business and Economics. Uh, we want to welcome you to our ChatGPT Winery Marketing Success Webinar as a hot industry topic um, that we're all seeing out there in the wine industry. Uh, we thought a great how-to webinar would be good uh, for our wine community. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Ryan Milani, our digital advertising and web consultant here with the School of Business and Economics. Welcome, Ryan. Hello. Thanks for having me. All right. So I'm going to let Ryan uh, begin, and um, we're going to do a little housekeeping really quick. So Ryan will probably answer questions after certain um, parts of the presentation and answer them through the uh, Q&A or chat that we have open. So um, have the floor is yours, Ryan. All right, very good. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody, and thanks for your time. I know this is such a hot topic right now, and I know some of you probably have had experience using uh, the chat GPT or maybe other some uh, other uh, tools for the AI, but I'm hoping that uh, this can be actionable for you. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, uh, I've been equating it a lot to like the impact that Google had and like search engines had when it came out. Um, it has that kind of feel to it. I mean, it's really a, a powerful tool and, a, and it's a game changer for sure. Very disruptive. Um, so let's dive in. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at like where we've been with AI and like, uh, and where we're at currently and then where we're going. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, AI's role in modern marketing. I, I'm sure some of you guys have like seen a lot of like prompt stuff and how to use it in your current uh, like roles and in, in work life. Um, we'll also look at like some of the challenges and how the AI can uh, kind of help address some of that. And then we'll look specifically at ChatGPT um, and do a little bit of an intro into it. But what I really want to dive into is like what it can do for you and like some real uh, best practices and some like uh, hands-on examples. So I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, you'll see my tabs up here. Uh, I'll be going over to chat GPT quite a bit and looking at some examples here. So we might bounce back and forth from the uh, presentation, but I want it to be pretty actionable and uh, you guys can get a, an idea of what it can do for you. And then we'll leave a, a little bit of time at the end, hopefully for a Q&A. Um, but again, if you have questions, like throw them in there. And then at different points, we can I can kind of like uh, address some of them if they're burning questions. Uh, you also notice a lot of the weird art in the <laughs> in the presentation. So a lot of the art I generated using uh, another AI tool called MidJourney. And you might have heard of MidJourney. It's an AI generation tool. I also have that open here. And I may or may not show you some of this stuff too, but it's pretty interesting and it's relevant and related to uh, some of the prompting uh, that you use in ChatGPT. So let's look at where we've been. So in this is five megabytes of computer storage being loaded into a truck in 1956. That was 67 years ago or 24,591 days ago, which is... Uh, a little insane to think about. It's uh, so we're early still with technology. I mean, it's really not that long, and uh, you know it, everything's pretty new. Um, so it's I, I just love looking at uh, the historical perspective of all, of all this because I was probably I think like you know nineteen eighteen when computers were really becoming uh, part of our everyday lives, and and here we are you know twenty eight years later, and we have like. We have AI in our pockets, you know, like our phones are are using a lot of AI already, and we have personal computers in our pockets. It's just mind blowing. So, where have we been with AI from like a cultural standpoint? Has kind of it's been around for a while. Like Rosie the robot um, from the Jetsons. We've had uh, Johnny Five is alive. Um, the more scary version of Terminator Two, the T eight hundred. And then everyone's like favorite cultural icon, R2-D2 there. Um, this is another one. I, these two I generated from uh, uh, mid-journey. This one I asked it to uh, place it next to um, a wine bottle and uh, some wine. So kind of an interesting little take on that. Uh, and then, of course, there's the other AI that is glaring at us. 
and that is the HAL from 2001, A Space Odyssey, which uh, uh, if you're familiar with that movie, you know that AI can be quite scary. <laughs> so where are we going? Uh, so this is, uh, we're going to go see The Wizard of Oz. Um, and if you remember Oz, uh, there's a good analogy here be behind Oz, because Oz is going to solve all the problems. Uh, and really, you know, uh, it's uh, the illusion of intelligence was uh, Oz's whole thing. You know, so just as the wizard created the illusion of being an all-powerful magical entity, you know, ChatGPT4 uh, and a lot of other AI tools create the illusion of understanding and intelligence. Um, it generates in a very coherent and like uh, in, uh, impressive responses to a lot of like your prompts. But it doesn't actually understand what you're the way that humans do. It's uh, patterns and learning, and it manipulates symbols to generate uh, the output. Um, you know, another analogy is behind the curtain. You know, the Oz is behind the curtain, turning the cranks, and uh, it was just an ordinary man, you know, pulling the levers and speaking into a microphone. Um, uh, and it's similar to ChatGPT or GPT-4, just complex algorithm, algorithms and large amounts of data. There's no magic, just uh, sophisticated technology. Uh, the other one, uh, the, the third analogy with the Wizard of Oz is that uh, empowerment. You know, the, the Wizard of Oz and uh, Dorothy and her friends believed that the wizard was going to give them what they wanted. And uh, they ultimately discovered that they already had the qualities themselves. And uh, it's similar to uh, AI tools like GPT-4 because uh, it's very empowering to an individual and an organization. Um, it allows you to perform tasks more efficiently and creatively, but ultimately the true power lies in the user and not the tool. And you'll see as we get into prompts, like the quality of your prompts really uh, increases your uh, ability to get better output. And so, um, I'll talk about that in a little bit too with uh, with the Abe, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> uh, there's also the another analogy that I like to make is the wildflower. Um, you, in the Wizard of Oz, you know they have all the poppies that are along the road that they get sleepy in. But the AI is spreading like a wildflower right now. You know if you go out and see after all the rain, the wildflowers are just taking over. Um, similar with AI, I mean it is very early and it's going to, it's spreading incredibly fast. Um, and I, we're going to see advances in technology, uh, and it's, a, it's a game changer. It's just a game changer. It's spreading very, very fast. And now you'll see all these tools probably that you're using like Canva and, uh, Adobe, you know, they're implementing AI at a, at a breakneck pace and it's just going to get better and better and better. Um, as far as the, like, philosophical standpoint on this stuff and the uh the scary parts of it um you know there is a lot there so i'm not going to talk a lot about that but uh but if you don't have a healthy fear of where we're going with ai then uh then you're not paying attention <laughs> so um so yeah you're probably already using it you know like it's it, it's in your devices it's in if you're using google ads and using performance max campaigns and uh, using conversion bid strategies that's all got ai baked into it a lot of design programs already have uh ai baked into it as well so like uh you might be seeing it in canva or like uh some uh, other programs that you're using um you might not be even be aware that you're using it i like to think of it as like there's quiet ai which is like behind the scenes like their technology stacks are running it to improve their software and then there's engaged ai where it's actually like you're giving it a prompt, it's producing an output. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so just to kind of like tie it all into wine, like uh, we put out a little bit of a poll and time constraints was a huge one that came up. But uh, you know, there's also like, you know, what do you do with your spend and your budget? Uh, where do you get ideas for content creation? How do you uh, stay up to date with like the changing environment, landscape of uh, and the trends of wine? How do you stay authentic in your messages, especially if you're using AI generation tools to like create content? Staying authentic and staying on tone and on uh, brand 
is a bit of a challenge. And that's where I think like you, you're never going to get like the perfect output from the system. You're still going to need to edit your work. You're still going to need to put in the work to like improve it, but it can help you leapfrog from where you're starting to where you can start editing and to where you can start publishing. So I'll get into that a, a bit too. Um, you know, acquiring skills. It's another area that uh, the chat GPT can help. If you don't know how to do something, it's particularly very good with code. So if you need to like add a certain code to the site, but you don't know what to do, you know, it can help with that stuff like that. I've had it build plugins for me that do uh, for like WordPress that help with uh, tasks. Um, and I know nothing about how to do that, but it was able to, to deliver the results pretty well. Uh, measuring results, it's a little bit less good for that, but um, but you can have it help you interpret data. Uh, it's very good at that. Um, give it a bunch of data and you know ask it to summarize it for you. It, it can do that really well. Um, Keeping up with the latest trends. Now, this is an interesting one because uh, ChatGPT has a cutoff date for its data set from 2001, uh, September of 2001. So for current stuff, it's not very good. Um, so that's where BARD comes in. BARD is Google's version of uh, AI, which they've re released you know, fairly recently. And they are, yeah, you can see it's still an experimental phase. But if you want it to summarize like wine news in the last seven days, this is going to be a great tool to do that. And, you know, one of the differences between these AI chat um, tools is that, you know, if you go to Google right now and you try and like find the, the, the trends from the last seven days, you might get like, you know, 50 articles that you have to decipher through to get the, the main bullet points of like what were the main trends last week. Uh, or the big news stories that came out last week, BARD is going to be a much better place to get that data because it's up to date. It's like today, you know, so uh, you can use BARD for that. So that data set is a uh, uh, cutoff is important. Uh, understanding your audience, it's great for like creating customer profiles. Um, so if you have like a little bit of data about like a customer profile or persona, you can feed it into uh, ChatGPT and ask it for like advice on like where these people, what magazines these people read, what websites they go to, what they, you know, what they might, uh, other things that they might be into. And you can really start building out more intelligent like uh, personas. Uh, uh, 2021, September of 2021 for the cutoff on the ChatGPT. Um, differentiating your pro product. This is one of my favorite. Uh, um, ways to use chat G, uh, GPT is to like find unique selling points and uh, and value propositions that you might not have thought about. You know, oftentimes we're, we we have the product in front of us or uh, and you, we see it, we're, we're very familiar with it. But if you feed what you have about your product into chat GPT, it can help expand your like your sphere of knowledge about this, uh, the way of thinking about it in a way that might not be, that you might not have thought about. Um, one of my favorite way, you, uh, ways to use ChatGPT with a client is like, you know, and show them the tool. It kind of, you see their, the aha moment, like, oh, I, I never, never thought to think of my my product or my brand like that. So it can, can really help with like um, business development kind of tasks, which I'll, I'll get into that a little bit too. Uh, cultivate an online presence, great for, for uh, creating, um, uh, like social posts, like drafts, uh, but also like who to maybe like uh, audience targeting to get in there. But this is actually a, a big one. Cultivated online experience is very time consuming. So it's kind of time uh, tied to your constraints and it's even tied to budget too, if you're going to do like social posting in there. Um, so that is definitely a, a challenge. Um, effective storytelling and engaging, creating engaging content. Now that this is a one area where it excels. Um, you know, like the other day, like I was writing a product description uh, for a hat on one of my little test hobby sites. And uh, I had it create a wrap for the hat and it did a, a really good job actually. Um, but you can do, have it write poems and, uh, and uh, I had, had it create a story about like a, a mouse, an ironic story about a mouse and a cat that were in a, a band together for my son. Um, but it, and it did a really good job and it created a whole series of them. So people are using uh, AI tools to like uh, create content too. Like uh, there's a bunch of product companies that are, people are using like the uh, design tools to create like coloring books. And 
pretty crazy. Um, and then measuring success, again, that's kind of tied to like measuring results, but it can help you interpret uh, uh, data really well. And that's another great way to use the uh, the tool, which I'll get into. Okay, to, to go back a little bit to like, you know, uh, the scary part and where we're at, you know, and this quote came out this a uh, couple weeks ago at Google Marketing Live, which is their like little event, but they it actually was said again last year by Andrew Smith, the global head of AI at Google Marketing Platform. It's not AI that you're competing against. It's other digital marketers who are using or not using the AI tools. So get ahead by learning to leverage these tools. So I, I think that's really relevant because there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of like uh, fear about job replacement, and, and that is absolutely true. Um, you know, I, I've seen different agencies, uh, you know decide not to hire a writer because they can kind of produce it in-house, but you can, you still need someone to edit these drafts that the outputs that, um, that they're, uh, they're generating. Um, there are a bunch of tools out there too, that can help identify like when content is written with, uh, with AI. And so that can be, that's definitely something that, that we'll get to in, in the warnings a little bit, but, uh, but it should be noted that like, you know, if you don't like put your hands on the content and kind of like help mold it a little bit, then, uh, then, you know, somebody could potentially like say, oh, you wrote this with AI, but I think a lot of stuff's going to get written by AI. So I don't think that's too big of a concern if the content is good and relevant and people, uh, 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 find it useful, then, then that's good. Uh, so we kind of covered this, but they, you know, the GPT is interpretation of numbers and symbols uh, to predict the text that's coming out that they tokenize everything and then they they have the output um, they don't have beliefs intentions or desires and any appearance of such is merely a reflection of the patterns they learn during training so it's kind of this goes to the philosophical part of it a little bit but it's based on this data set that it, it collected and it's reflecting what's in that data set so um G, uh, the GPT, the chat GPT is one data set. Google has another data set. All these different systems that are going to come out uh, and that have come out. There's Jasper AI, um, which is another chat. There's a lot of the different data sets that they're allowing. And, you know, eventually the protection of data sets and what, what gets scraped and collected um, is going to be a bit of an issue in the, in the future. All right, so let's do a quick demo of it. Because, so if you've never used chat GPT, um, uh, I will give you a little example. I got a prompt that I've created and we're going to go over the, here to a new chat. Now I use a subscription model to chat GPT. So I pay like the $20 a month to be able to like get more with the, the chat GPT four. Um, now you, there's chat GPT 3.5 and then there's four. 3.5 is fast and great for most everyday tasks. And it's important, even if you have the chat GPT four, subscription it's important to note that this is still a very viable option if you're if you're asking for like simple tasks that are like summarize this email like what is my client asking for from me in this email it can do it can handle that and it can lightning fast uh produce the output um and chat gpt4 um is better for more thoughtful well structured content so um get a little bit closer here for bigger font. Um, okay, so let's do a little GPT-4. I'm just gonna load up this prompt here. So I'm giving a presentation on ChatGPT in a webinar right now, and it's not going well. Can you give me a short pep talk? And a quick tip to turn things around, maybe give me an example. You know, I'm here to help. First, remember that or an essential part of this process, you've got expertise and you're leading the webinar, which is an incredible feat itself. It's completely normal to uh, hit a few roadblocks along the way. And every presenter has been exactly where you are right now. <laughs> so it's giving me some advice and it's giving me a pep talk. And then it's, uh, it's giving me an example that I can, uh, can try. But here you can see that I have a prompt and here it's giving me an example. And then uh, it, this is a pretty long format. So I'm going to give it uh, another prompt. And so if you'll see that this is, conversational and this is really what's different than what you get with like google search results where it's not really conversational it's more of like one-off here's your results 
they're changing that. Um, it's going, the Google is going to change for sure. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, so anyways, conversational, uh, I don't have time to read this. Shorten, please. And we got a, a, it will refer to this previous post and it'll shorten it all up for me. So basically you have a prompt and it produces output and, uh, and it will take into account, um, you know, what you want to, uh, uh, what you want to uh, uh, come up with. But uh, what is the most important piece here is that your prompts matter incredibly. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about prompts. But uh, so, you know, what can it, what can the tool do for you? It can help you streamline content and writing tasks. You know, I use it a lot for website enhancement and SEO. A lot of times, especially with wineries, they don't have a lot to say uh, so much, you know, they might have like no, like maybe a paragraph of like uh, your winery story on your homepage, which is not great for SEO. Like Google and other search engines want to see like a lot of content. If you don't say it, they don't know to rank you for it. Um, you know, I think wineries are much better at product descriptions. They do tend to have like well uh, rounded, like tasting notes and things to pair it with. But for like enhancing your story or finding keywords that you might want to throw in on your, your homepage to help your SEO, it can be really helpful. Ad copy is uh, another incredibly valuable one. Google Performance Max campaigns right now are actually implementing AI within your headlines and descriptions. So it'll actually help prompt you to create a longer ad um, or more variations, which is really helpful. But for your purposes, like you know, figuring out what to say and how to say it to increase click-through rates and uh, conversion rate optimization. Uh, GPT can be really helpful with just giving you some variations. Like you might have one, you know, say you, you've drafted an ad copy that you're like, okay, here's our print ad that we want to run. And now give me like uh, 10 different variations of this um, for uh, these two uh, audience personas. And it can help you uh, uh, do that. Uh, emails, newsletter drafts, also incredibly good at drafting emails. Um, you could even feed it uh, one of your previous emails and, uh, you know, you could have a draft of your first email. You can have the, the finalized version of your, uh, of that email. And then you could have another draft and then say output like the previous, uh, finalized version of our other draft. And it will do a similar format to that. And it can just really, you'll still want to edit it and make sure it looks good, but it can really help you uh, create uh, uh, good email drafts. And you you can have it do things like, you know, uh, our, uh, our click-through rate and our conversion rate hasn't been so good from this uh, last email. Can you give us some uh, tips on increasing click-through rate and conversion rates? And it will draft a uh, great uh great recommendations for you to like, you know, give an offer or to uh, you know, just a bunch of different variations of like how you could, might think about conversion rate optimization or click-through rate. Uh, print materials, yeah, you can also use it for your print materials too. Um, you know, kind of same uh, stuff that you had have up here. Uh, so Stocks the Robot from Light Years, another good uh, pop culture. I love this movie. No, Nobody else agrees, but Stocks was great. Um, but I use uh, ChatGPT all the time for personal, uh, as a personal assistant. You know, this is kind of like Jarvis uh, from Iron Man too. Uh, it, it's a lot like that. But you know, a lot of times I'll have it uh, take an email from. Uh, uh, sometimes I work with people for, in uh, other countries, and sometimes their emails are difficult to decipher. You know what they're asking of me, so I'll have uh, ChatGPT summarize my tasks, and that's really helpful. <laughs> That can save a lot of time and uh, uh, confusion. Um, life stuff, you know, I had it uh, like uh, help uh, help all sorts of stuff with that. Like uh, just uh, we'll look at some examples there. Uh, support, yeah, just a lot of good support and like coaching. I I, uh, I play disc golf a lot, and uh, I have it give me tips on uh, things I can do to like improve my game. Uh, so that's kind of a fun one. Um, it can also give you a pep talk if you have a bad round. I've had it do that for me too. 
but it's really just great for questions and answers. I mean, any kind of question or answer and answer that you need, it can be really good. And because it's conversational, you can kind of hone it and work with it and get uh, to what you need. Okay, so now we're getting into the uh, the, the bread and butter, uh, the, <laughs> the bread and jam. Uh, if you've ever, uh, well, let's talk about prompts. This is what this is all about. Like, how do you structure your source of, um, well, before I get into this, let me just take a couple of questions uh, in the parents and such as Can you teach it to create a Cambridge Analytica and Russian bot type of campaign? So that's an ethical thing. And uh, I'll get into the warnings there, but yeah, it can be used nefariously too. Uh, is there a, and I will say that the open AI, which created um, ChatGPT, I do think their head is on the right shoulders. There's some great interviews with the uh, the founder and uh, I do think they are, they they take this stuff seriously and I think they're in the right, uh, they're going in the right direction. Is there a resource list of prompts we could use or should we ask ChatGPT for it? Yes, you should ask ChatGPT for it. It's great and be specific. So let's get into the uh, best practices there. Um, so if you've ever done the peanut butter and jelly test uh, where you uh, give kid, you do it to anybody, but like, tell me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it will come out looking like this or the jar will be on top of the bread. It's kind of similar with like ChatGPT and other AI tools. You know, people are going to have to get really good at being uh, explicit with these uh, with these tools. So here's some best practices. Yeah, be explicit. Uh, specify the format of the answer that you're looking for. Um, so you want to be really just specific. And uh, more speci specificity is better. Um, include context, you know, and be specific with the context. A lot of times when I'm doing like something with a, a website, I'll grab as much content as I can from their about page, from their home page. And I'll just feed that into the system. Like, here's all the context. Oh, and also, you know, like our winery experienced a, uh, a dip in sales last year. And, oh, we got featured, though, in a magazine over here. You know, like, I'll just give it random stuff to consider. And it will, like, take that into account when it's producing your content. Um, so guide the model is what I'm going to talk about next. And this is like system level instructions. And it's, it is your prompt. And so we'll, we'll look at some examples there. But you can also use step-by-step -step instructions. Like, you know, spell this out for me and, uh, and get it to think about it uh, in sequence. And then iterate and experiment. Yeah, that's very important to like uh, try different things. You, you never, it can do basically anything for you. So experiment with it. Um, and another uh, tip here is to, you know, the Abe Lincoln quote that may or may not have been said by him, but give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. It's important to have a good prompt and to try different prompts to get the uh, results that, you, uh, that you're looking for. So here are some of the guide the model prompts that I just wanted to like show that, you know, certain ways that you can kind of like use this, you know, so develop an integrated marketing plan or campaign to promote or uh, a new wine release from your winery, uh, targeting wine enthusiasts and connoisseurs. Now here you could be more specific than wine enthusiasts and connoisseurs. You could have like more about the profile. You could expand this out to like five paragraphs, you know, more context, the better. But uh, this is like where the sharpening the axe. This is a very surface level one. If it knows the winery that you are, uh, that you're writing the prompt for, that, that can be really good too, because you can ask ChatGPT, are you familiar with our winery and give it the brand? And then it'll say, yes, you are blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Now that the conversation that you have in that, in that conversation uh, will be prompted with your brand. So next, when you dive, great, can you help me uh, develop an integrated marketing campaign? It can go off of that because it knows about you. You can also feed it more context if it's wrong and say like, no, that's not quite right. Uh, and ChatGPT can be wrong quite a bit too. So uh, ChatGPT 4 is a lot better than ChatGPT 3.5 for correctness. All right, so there's a bunch of prompts here. Uh, I think we'll go into some examples and then uh, if we have a little bit of time, we can go back and actually use some of these prompts. Uh, I think I'll wait to do that. So let's go into ChatGPT and look at some examples. 
So I have a bunch just from my personal that I've like booted up and I have some that are uh, streamlined content or personal assistance. So let's look at like a streamlined content workflow here that I that I have. Comes up. There we go. All right. So here's one where uh, I did this as an example. It's not an actual client or anything, but I wanted to using one of those prompts from the slideshow, create engaging social media content ideas to showcase the unique features and qualities of your winery's wine. So then I added to that and I said, here's info on the wine. I went to the website and I just grabbed this particular vignette. I actually like this one a lot. Um, and uh, grab whatever it had on that page for that wine. And then it output some ideas for uh, for some social posting. So behind the scenes video, food pairing challenge, um, virtual tasting event, wine cocktail recipes, wine tasting tips, uh, grape spotlight, meet the winemaker. So these are all great ideas. And some of them might be like, nah, it's not really us. And some of them might be like, wow, that that's a great idea that we didn't think about. Like, um, I think uh, there was one like a uh, like showcase the winemaker. Yeah. Live social media Q&A where followers can ask the winemaker about the winemaking process. Uh, the 2001. You know, so that I thought was a really cool idea that I hadn't thought about. And if I wanted to give a get a step by step uh, on how to do that, all we'd have to do is copy that and come down to the conversation and say, great, how do we, uh, give us a step-by-step -step on this. And I'll just post that right in there. And then it will start outputting that. Uh, I, in this thread though, I actually said, great, how, or I said, how about helping us develop an uh, integrated marketing campaign to promote a new wine? This is another prompt from that other slide. Uh, which I did generate from chat GPT and it started to do this. So it, it, uh, it didn't quite hit the mark here, but it is a little bit more of like a business development, uh, kind of a higher level strategy. Um, and then I said, oh yeah, here's the step-by-step -step that, uh, that I just placed in here. So yeah, then it kind of like label, uh, draws it all out for you so you can actually like take action on this. It's not going to leave you high and dry. And you could dr drill into e at any one of these, like go live. Okay, well, you know, how, how do I do that? You know, and it, it can might suggest a few platforms and whatnot. So it can keep on going and going and going. Um, let's look at another example. Images of maps, maybe some sort of AI in general. Uh, you know, maps are a little bit tougher. There, there might be, you probably have to go to a third party uh, system to generate a map. Uh, Mid journey might not do that so well. Um, just, yeah, it might not do that so well. But uh, I would look, I would go to like a Google or Bard actually and type in like AI map generators and see what you can find there. Uh, so here's just like a little uh, quick thing that I had had it do. Can you please shorten this paragraph? And so we, I had a paragraph here that I was using for a report and I just wanted it to be a little bit shorter and it, it took some characters off that. And I said, okay, great. I needed the D I needed to do some math. It did some math for me. And then I wanted it even shorter. So it, it was able to summarize that by keeping a lot of the, uh, a lot of the same stuff here without all the fluff. So that's really uh, a, uh, a way that I use this a lot just to kind of like shorten stuff down. Uh, here I had it, uh, I needed a privacy policy for a website. So I uh, mentioned where they're located and I said how, what we're using for tracking. And now this is important. It's not a lawyer, but it can suggest some generic examples of a privacy policy. And so in this particular case, I knew that like having uh, just something would be better than nothing. And so I asked it to do it. And this is good for the purposes that I was looking for. Um, here's one that's wine related. I wanted a fun fact about bud break in relation to, uh, grape growing in the Napa Valley. That's where I added in a little bit of like, I probably wouldn't say that to like someone that I want, you know, if I were to ask a friend, like, Hey, give me a fun fact about bud break. Probably wouldn't say grape growing in Napa Valley, but I wanted to be really specific. And, and in this particular case, it did pretty good. So, um, and then I get asked for a fun fact about wind machines, heaters, or overhead sprinklers. 
And so it gave me some uh, some fun facts there, a couple more. Um, and so you can kind of see how I'm just using this whole thread to get some uh, some ideas for content. Uh, all right, here's one for, let's see. Oh, I was writing uh, a LinkedIn carousel ad and I had some uh, some content that I needed headlines for. So I uh, gave it some prompts here and was able to get some headlines that I was able to use for uh, developing um, our ad. Let's see. Let's see, I think maybe some more. Let's show a, a personal assistant one. Um, I was thinking about uh, visiting uh, Ireland, Norway, and Sweden, and I was looking for the best months to travel. And so it took a little bit of time because it kept giving me the best months for each individual country. Um, but I used the conversational aspect of ChatGPT to condense it down if I were to visit the two places um, in the same time. Uh, yeah. Did you use ChatGPT to de develop the ad copy for this webinar? Heck yeah. Are you crazy kidding me? I mean, I could have done it just without, but uh, a lot of this stuff, yeah, I use ChatGPT a lot to uh, help prepare for the the, uh, the webinar. Um, for example, uh, the Wizard of Oz. I wanted to like make the tie to going to see the Oz. And so I asked uh, the, for some analogies to the Wizard of Oz, and it helped me create those, uh, those same kind of uh, uh, the illusion of intelligence behind the current empowerment. Yeah, but again, it was my idea. They just helped me connect the dots and screw things down a little bit. Uh, let's see, shortening. Uh, we did that one. Let's see what else we got in here. Expanding content. Okay, here's a here's a product company. Okay, so this client I've uh, worked with for for a while, and he is a manufacturer. He is not a uh, he is not a writer, and neither am I really. You know, I can produce some content, but I'm not very. It's not a strong suit. And so over the years, you know, I've had him uh, it, him and I will like get on a meeting, and we try and like draft some content to talk about his his like packaging manufacturing business, but it's always been a long dredge through the mud. And in this particular case, he sent me a text where he had just done voice to uh, voice to text as a draft. And then I said, great, and popped into the chat GPT and it outputted like a much better, more cohesive, well-structured output that we're able to use. And he was kind of blown away. So that's a, another great tactic kind of a low key tactic for using uh, chat GPT, which, uh, uh, which I'll do frequently is I'll use um, like my device and I'll do a little voice to, uh, to text. I'll use Google Drive and just like open up a document and I will, um, and I'll just start talking and then I will take that content, pop it in chat GPT and have it clean it up for me. Uh, so that, that's uh, another good way. So let's see, let's take some wine examples. So here's one where I, I did this right before the webinar, but uh, are you familiar with Corbell uh, Champagne Cellars? So I, I took that as an initial prompt and it said, yes, I'm familiar. And I figured it would be, but I wanted to like just double check. Uh, and then I stopped it from, it was going to start giving a big, long description of what who Corbell was, but I stopped it because I wanted to move on. So then I used one of our prompt, one of the prompts from here. Oops. Um, and I think it was for some social media content ideas and popped it into here. And this is where I expanded on that and added, I wanted to be specific. I wanted to expand on some content. So specifically the Corbell Brut Rosé, which I happen to like. And so I put that in here and then I went to their product uh, page on their website and I grabbed everything that they had on that page, which wasn't that much. Beautiful website, but it wasn't that much, but it was something. And then the output here was some social media ideas. So again, it kind of did that food pairing series, cocktail recipes, behind the scenes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I, I said, no, sorry, I'm looking for three social posts. And here it delivered pretty well. So it gives me an idea of what the image should look like. And I could, if I was uh, inclined, I could ask it to expand on that and give me some more variations. 
Uh, it gave me some hashtags to throw in there, even though that, that probably wouldn't be the best one, but like it might be an interesting one. It gave me some emojis to include. It gave me some recipes. Now, I don't know if they'd want to do something like this because it's adding uh, strawberry lemonade in there with the Brut Rosé, but hey, it actually kind of sounds pretty good. <laughs> and then uh, food pairing post, uh, beautiful plated pizza or grilled shrimp with a glass of Corbel. Ah, oh, sounds good. I can see the image already. Probably throw that into uh, mid journey and 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 have that uh, deliver. Um, did you know our Corbel Rose uh, pairs beautifully with a variety of foods? They have a shrimp icon in here and pizza. I mean, it, it uh, really um, can um, make you go faster, and it can help give you some great ideas. But again, a little scary, but uh, you know, if I wanted to get 10 more of these ideas, all I could just do down here is just say 10 more, please. You don't even have to say please, but I like to be nice. And it will uh, keep going. So pretty crazy stuff here. Um, and so the question, a couple questions, can ChatGPT teach me to be a ChatGPT consultant? Uh, could it replace an MBA program? You know, no with the MBA program, because, uh, I, I did an MBA program and I think really the value there was the, the, the people that you do the program with and uh, the people factor and the professors um, uh, all have great relationships with uh, from that. So in that regard, no, I don't think so. Technology, while it can pretend to be your friend, it, it can't really be your friend. Um, but it could probably teach you to be a chat GPT consultant, heck yeah. Uh, okay, so can you input data as an Excel doc? Yes, um, it isn't perfect uh, in the regards of like how it outputs in here, but I have done that. And actually I booted up an example right before this, uh, right before this, let me see if I can grab it. Um, where did it go? I don't know if it saved it. Um, so one of the things I did was I, if you're not familiar with Google Search Console, this is your organic ranking into your website. So how does Google see your website? And uh, it gives you, you know, your clicks and impressions. It'll tell you what position you're in for each one. Um, and so what I did was I grabbed the top uh, 100 keywords and I just exported them into a spreadsheet. So here we have uh, a bunch of data here. And in this particular case, I just, grabbed the top keywords and um oh here it is okay great uh so i grabbed the top keywords and my prompt was uh based on the following list what keywords should we optimize for and then i forgot to post or paste the list in here so i let it go a little bit and i said oh oops here's the list and so i put in all those 100 keywords and here's the output that it gave me Based on the provided list, here are some potential keywords to optimize for SEO. I didn't like this result because it didn't really do anything. I just cut it in half. Uh, oh, Alejandro, I thought that was you. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. Or good to good to see you here. Um, so then I, I cut it down, and I, now I have five keywords that we can kind of start to optimize for. You know, one's brand, the other for our all uh, industry. So. Uh, so yes, you can definitely put in data. You can actually grab rows too and have it summarize that, but sometimes it's not that good with the numbers. Uh, so you definitely wanna check your work there. Like if I were to like have it do an average, it's not gonna be as in, uh, as good as doing like an average in here, um, but it will be good with code. Um, so uh, if you need code, it's great for that. I wanna leave enough time for Q and A. Um, Let's see if there's any more in here that are really burning ones. Business development, uh, this is a good one. I should highlight this one. Okay, so this is on GPT-4. Uh, here's the prompt that I use. The wine marketing landscape in Napa and Sonoma, and globally for that matter, are super competitors, is super competitive. Our wines are incredible, but we struggle to stay relevant in front of our potential customers as more and more supply increases. What are some ways we can make sure we survive in this climate? So I, uh, and then it outputted a bunch of uh, good things. You know, I was talking to my friend the other uh, the other day about this and how like 
you know, if, if you have a good coach, business coach, or if you have like a good network of friends or, uh, or colleagues to be able to talk about this stuff with, that's very good. You know, like you, that's where you can kind of like tease out some of this uh, business development stuff. But this is also a great tool to be able to go to, to get some new ideas that can kind of like help, help you think outside uh, your sphere of reference or your sphere of influence. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so here's some of the ideas. And one of these stood out to me was influencer marketing. And I don't do a lot of influencer marketing and I don't, I haven't done that much. So I, I asked ChatGPT to give me a step-by-step -step plan to do it. Um, and so it, it uh, started to do that. You know, I could dive into any one of these points too. I could, I could ask it to help me define some goals. Like, uh, I'm not sure where to start here or, um, you know, uh, identify your target audience. Like, I don't know where to start there. Or, you know, you could, uh, you could have any one of these be uh, expanded out. You could also go to Bard to help you find current influencers in wine. So uh, you could use Bard in that regard, because this, since this is cut off at September 2021, Bard would be a much better place to go, come in here and ask, like, uh, name top influencers, uh, social in wine now i could get more specific here if i had more time i could say things like napa i could say things like uh high-end wines i could say uh show me instagram profiles only i could say uh you know i could get really really uh specific can chat gpt help determine a competitive set uh alternatively are there prompts that we could use that could help us stand out amongst competitors yeah, unique selling points. Like that's a good one. Uh, you could even feed it like uh, feed it your competitors and feed it like uh, you might need some context on your competitors, like maybe who they are or what wines they have, or um, you could ask them if they're familiar with it, and then uh, ask for uh, points of uh, unique selling points for your particular brand or your winery. Very good for stuff like that. Um, uh, and, but again, September 20, uh, 2021 is the cutoff. So it's not going to have like super uh, recent stuff. Uh, you know, the, really the, the, the sky's the limit with, uh, with what kind of prompts you, uh, you go for. Let's see if we have clarification. Here's one where I didn't understand what they were saying and it just helped me understand it. Uh, here's uh where i was posting a blog post to a website it's not not wine but i had it uh shorten the title and the the slug um and then i had to add in some uh h2s into the content to kind of help uh, break up the the content here so it added in some h2s um all right so let's go are there any more like uh questions that we can that can tackle now would be a good time to put them in there. Otherwise, I'll start just keep showing some of these examples. Maybe even do. Um, oh, this is actually a good one to go into as well. Uh, this is about tone. So, with authentic authenticity and and preserving tone, um, when I do the voice to text, it actually does preserve a lot of uh, the tone there. Uh, is there time to see how you can create them? Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll cover that. Uh, it could actually do a pretty good job of like discovering my tone and holding on to it. Um, this is another example that I did though, where I, I just chose a random winery, um, in Calistoga and asked it to tell me everything it knew about it. And it did a good job. They did, this is a case where they, did, they don't say a lot on their website. Um, so I wanted to find out like more about this stuff and this actually produced a whole lot more than what was listed on the uh, on the winery. And so uh, then I, I, I said, I'm going to feed you some content from the website and I'd like you to do your best to identify the tone. Then we'll want to use that tone to write an email newsletter about Bud Break and our current events we have on our website. And so then I fed it a bunch of content, everything I could find on their about page. And then the tone, this is the output, the tone of the content appears to be informative, professional, and engaging. The text provides detailed, specific information about the vineyard's location. Yeah, so it, there it gave uh, the context. And then it produced the output that I asked for. 
So it has a subject line here, uh, bud break and the upcoming events in their vineyards. <laughs> it did this in like 10 seconds, I think. Uh, so then it outputted this, uh, this full email. And then I said, write three social posts for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, all will show a bud break up close. It did that as well. Same with the emojis. Um, and bam, just like that. And it held the tone, which was uh, interesting too. Okay. Uh, you can also have it format this for uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact. Just say format for MailChimp and it'll... And, uh, oh, and I did this one like last week. That's another point about this. It holds on to the conversation so you can revisit it. And uh, it's like, you know, going right back into it. All right, getting some questions here. Uh, we wanna see some images with AI. Do you need to start a new check for new topics or can, okay, we just tackled that. Just keep adding to that one. How do we get started if we've never used any AI for doing anything? Well, ChatGPT is free. So I would try using that first or BARD and just experiment. Um, don't give it any personal data. So let me go to these real quick. Uh, it doesn't, uh, if you close a conversation, it's not going to remember it. So it's not learning from it. Don't share sensitive personal information. Um, uh, that's a very uh, important one because it, it does collect it and to, uh, to read it. So you don't want to put in like your PIN numbers or social security card or anything there. It's not always accurate. Um, it, misinterpretations happen. Uh, it can be misused. So use responsibly. Uh, don't rely solely on AI for important decisions. That's another good one. You know, like it's like that friend that gives you advice. You don't always take that advice. Same thing here. Sensitive topics, uh, some content may be refused. That's the same thing with mid-journey too. Like uh, mid-journey uh, will sometimes refuse a prompt if it thinks it's too risque or something like that um, or illegal. Uh, AI can make errors. Uh, so yeah, just get started. Just I would go to Bard actually. Bard's probably the, one of the easier ones to just get into. Um, uh, ChatGPT is also very good. Uh, for tone, I experiment with a prompt that says write a paragraph about X Y Z in the tone and style of yes. You can have it. Um, I, I did uh, Monty Python uh, voice. You could do Shakespeare. You can tell it to be anybody anybody's tone really. Um, and fact checking. Chat GPT, that's a very interesting philosophical question uh, on that one. Uh, fact checking is like so hard now. <laughs> so it's all about this data set. It doesn't know right or wrong. I, I talked to my wife about this like for an hour yesterday, just mulling over the, uh, the implications of all this. Uh, so we got just a couple minutes left, but I just wanted to show what uh, Mid Journey is. This is Mid Journey. It's in a Discord server. Um, you feed it a prompt, which looks like this. Imagine is the prompt, and then you could say anything. Uh, you can in here. You can see I said like a sticker. I gave it an image, and I said sticker on white background with yellow brick road, Emerald City, and this is what it output. So it's kind of a longer topic and may, might be another session for a uh, webinar, but uh, you can you can get uh, images from it, you can re-roll it, you can get variations. So it's pretty uh, impressive what you can do here. Yeah, so I see a lot of in accurate information with obscure wine grapes. Yep, you're gonna see that. That's why it's important to fact check. And that's also why the peanut butter jelly sandwich becomes an important aspect of this. Like what you prompt it is going to impact your, your output a lot. So that's why having a lot of context and a lot of input on your initial asks is really helpful. Like you'll see, you saw some of mine where I had like one line of a prompt. That's fine if you just want to like shorten content. But if you're trying to get an output of something specific, you got to feed that you got to feed that uh, really well because uh, you'll get a better output. You'll get a better peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Are the images and content that Midjourney outputs licensed for commercial use? I think so, but there are some limitations there, I believe. But I believe there, uh, it's, yeah, I believe you can commercially use them because people are doing it with like stickers and 
and uh and yeah and that's another ethical question because that those images got scraped from, from somewhere uh so how does chat or how does mid journey you know like uh, that's going to be an ethical or not an ethical question but a legal question in the uh the future but right, right now we're kind of in the wild wild west can you tell it to narrow the resources to specific ones yeah you can you can try um that's yes definitely you can definitely get but i would be curious about the it depends on what the resources you're talking about uh if it's in in the data set that chat gpt is using yeah, because Adobe Firefly does not allow commercial use. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, Adobe Firefly is pretty new. Uh, I'm excited to see what they do with that. Uh, and it, it probably has something to do with the legal on the uh, the collection of like where all that stuff was scraped. Uh, how can entrepreneurs within industry utilize AI and these resources? Well, it, it it comes down to like, what are you looking to accomplish? I mean, it can uh, it can impact so much of what you do from as an entrepreneur, you're constantly dealing with like uh, requests and and business development. Um, I've had it produce marketing plans and business plans. Um, and as a start, that gets you going. That gives you at least the pieces you need to start doing it. But again, having good uh, prompts to kind of get you going. Can help you like totally develop business i think it's going to be a boom for entrepreneurship to be honest because i now it becomes a lot easier to produce things it becomes a lot easier to get to to have movement um so I, i'm pretty optimistic about it it'd be great to see another webinar on ai graphic generation great yeah you're welcome i hope uh i hope this time was valuable for you guys hope uh hope it didn't uh I hope I covered everything that you're hoping to get out of it, but really it's something to experiment with and, uh, and have fun with. It can be really helpful though, just from a, a personal everyday use. Huge boon to business owners who have no time for social media, which can be a huge time suck. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Aaron. I think that's about it. Let me see if we got anything else in here. Yeah, if you want to uh, find me, I'm on LinkedIn there. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Michael. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, great. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. We hope you had a good session. And, you know, feel free to email me at... Um, metsme at sonoma.edu. Um, and we are recording this, so we will send it out to other members in your community, um, especially some of the people that came from the wine association groups. Um, those will go back out to your executive directors to receive a recording on this. So again, Ryan, thank you so much. And I hope everyone had a great time. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everyone.